Hey, so it's tournament week. This is the week of the Straight Up Fishing Championship Tournament on Lake Hartwell. I want to help you guys out as much as I can. So I wanted to make a video that's something like a little bit of a guide to help you catch fish, kind of point you in the right direction. So everybody has access to this video, so I feel like it's fair game. And hopefully it'll help you catch fish. We want you to have a good time, catch some fish, so you'll come back and fish with us again. You see, we actually have some pretty stable weather coming in. Uh, it's 57 right now, pretty much straight up bluebird. You know, there's a few, I guess it's not bluebird, there's a few clouds in the sky. But uh, looks like Saturday, the high is 52, low is 30. Sunday is sunny, uh, 54, lows 28. So I think the weather is going to be pretty good for this week for as comfortable for you guys anyway. So this is what you can expect when you fish Lake Hartwell if you've never been there before. Lake Hartwell is 56,000 acres. It is a huge pond. It's on the Savannah River chain. It splits Georgia and South Carolina. When you're headed towards the dam, on the right side is going to be the Georgia side and on the left side is going to be the South Carolina side. When you get your fishing license, the license is reciprocate. So if you've got a Georgia license, it's okay to use that in South Carolina side. If you've got a South Carolina fishing license, it reciprocates on the Georgia side. So you only need one license for this week of fishing. So Lake Harl is a deep, clear 56,000 acre impoundment. Basically what you guys are gonna be fishing for is largemouth in the creeks. You got spotted bass on the main lake. Don't be surprised if you hook into a big striper. We don't have a bunch of them, but we do have a few walleye in Lake Hartwell as well. Of course, the only thing that counts in the tournament is bass, but I'm just letting you know that you might run into some other things as well. The coolest thing about Lake Hartwell is it has a lot of options. You won't run out of water and things to do. You've got it all, and at some point, if you'll just study the map, you'll find everything you're looking for. The shoreline is littered with floating docks, timber, laydowns, uh, you've got just about everything, rip rap, you've got bridges, there's plenty of stuff for you to fish on the shore, and there's also a lot to keep you interested if you're a deep water angler as well. There's plenty of deep timber, there's a lot of ditches, what we call ditches here in South Carolina, so I don't think anybody's going to be bored of running out of things to do or That's find be caught in a situation where there's not a way for you to catch fish the way that you know how to fish. In the event that it is sunny like it is today, I would probably bet on having to slow down a little bit more. Uh, a lot of your action baits might not work as good, so you might have to catch fish drop shotting out deep. Uh, if you're fishing from the shore, I would still concentrate on those bridges, but maybe fish more like the columns in the middle over deeper water. Those fish are going to set up on shade lines. Of course, the guys that want to fish the docks, it's going to be an awesome time to fish docks if it's low and flat like it is now and sunny. Those fish are always going to use those shade lines, even though the water may be in the 40s, because those shade lines are ambush point for the fish. So it has any has anything to do with how cold it is. Believe it or not, these fish actually bite better first thing in the morning. So keep that in mind. If you're practicing for the event, get to your juice first thing in the morning. I don't know why they do that. That's just the way it is in South Carolina. I want to give you guys five ways that you can catch fish on Lake Hartwell right now. For you guys that like to fish finesse stuff, you like to fish deep, you like to do some of the more complicated fishing, Lake Hartwell is going to be a playground for you. There's a lot of deep timber from basically 35 foot out and you guys are going to be able to catch a lot of spotted bass in those. You might run into a large mouth or two, but most likely you're going to catch spotted bass. What I like to use is Ned Rigs, Drop Shots, Jigging Spoons. That's what I like to fish when I'm fishing deep on Lake Hartwell. Yeah, I'm on some for sure. You can see them down there on the bottom. They're right on the bottom too. There he goes. Got him. Got him. That's what I love about those, this style of fishing is being able to see them. Like using your electronics like that. It's so cool, man. Like we've been going around fishing, fishing, and I hadn't seen any fish. Oh, that's a good one too. Oh God, bro. That is a, that's a really good one. Wow. Oh dude, look at all the thread fin shad he's spitting up. Like you, oh God, look at all this, look at all the shad. Dude, that little streaks is a monster when they're feeding on small shad like that. That is a monster bait. Ah, okay, now look at this. Cake, cake, 
cake, birthday cake right there, baby. They're down there feeding on shad. You can look, if you look in the water, you see all that, all that looks like feathers? That's shad the fish just spit up. If I get one close enough to me, I'll, I'll pick it up. But I could, I could see those fish on the graph and you drop down to them. And like, dude, that visual stimulation is just like top water fishing. I know like right now fishing with electronics is like one of the most heavily contested topics in all of fishing because some people feel like that is you have an unfair advantage against the fish when you're using electronics. If you're on that side of the fence, cool. I'm gonna use electronics and there's gonna be days where I just get in my kayak and I have absolutely nothing. I appreciate both styles of fishing because there's nothing like that visual stimulation just like when you're top water fishing of seeing the fish on the graph, dropping down to it. Oh, he's about to bite it, bite to bite it. He's got it. Like, uh, dude, th that's what I live for. Oh. Oh. For you shallow water anglers, we've got that as well. There's plenty of creeks for you to go up. There's Corner Ross Creek, there's 6 and 20 Creek, even some of the creeks up the Lightwood Inn, there's Little Beaver Dam, there's Big Beaver Dam. There is so many creeks on this place that if you like to fish shallow and you like to fish stained water, we've got that for you too. So you largemouth fishermen, you guys that are maybe from some of the further southern states where you're used to getting into dirty water and fishing shallow, just find your creek, get in there, there's plenty of docks, floating docks that you guys can fish around. There's plenty of laydowns, rocky banks. That's where you guys are gonna to wanna to concentrate. When I'm fishing in the creeks, it's gonna be a chatterbait, spinnerbait, crankbait, jigs, something that you like to flip. That's probably what you're gonna concentrate on if you're gonna be a creek fisherman this week. Oh man. Got him. This is Z-Man Sling Blades. Something that's more. This is a Minnows trailer. There's some other options that you guys are gonna have if you're fishing the main lake or in the clear water as well. Lake Hartwell has a lot of deep points. There's deep points, there's shallow, slow tapering points. There's points that drop off in deep water. Those points are great places, especially in windy conditions. Hopefully we do get some wind. For a jerk bait or fishing shaky heads, any kind of reaction bait that you might want to throw in a windy condition, if it kind of calms down, you might have to slow down and fish a little slower. But any of those points are always fair game because there's probably going to be bait there and there's probably going to be some man-made brush piles on those points as well. Those spotted bass live around those almost year round. So try those as well. The one thing I love about Lake Hartwell over any of these other lakes in this area is the ability to switch gears. You can fish the docks. That ain't working, you got other options. Go sight fishing, all right? You ain't catch some sight fishing? Well, what does the conditions give you? Oh, the wind's blowing real hard? I got you, Jerry. Let's go throw a jerk bait and a sprinter bait on Main Lake points. There he is, good one, good one. There he is. Do you get out here in that 30 mile an hour wind? <laughs> There's something about you got two elements fighting you. You got the wind fighting you, and then you got the big old spotted bass trying to fight you too. This is pretty cool. <laughs> For the people watching know we're not up north. This is in South Carolina. And we, yes, we do get three to four foot waves here. Harlow's a big lake. Let's see, I think I can flip him. Loco special. You make me crazy. Get it? You make me, oh dude, look at what, look what he just spit up. Look what he just spit up. You wanna know what they're eating? Now, why did he eat a jerk bait? I have no idea. That's like a little baby brim or something. But for some reason, he just decided he'd eat my jerk bait. God, that's a pretty fish. Look how thick he is. The body on them things are like, 
That's them gorilla spots that I was talking about earlier today. He came out for that jerk, man. He was like, <laughs> that's a lot of fun, man. Trying to battle the elements out here to catch spotted bass. And I finally just trusted my gut and I went out and threw a jerk bait. The very first point I pull up to, I catch one, you know, 14, 16 inches long. But that was a storyteller. The moment I caught that first one, I was like, let's go. We can do this. Put it in gear. Because if you've ever fished a jerk bait in extremely windy conditions, the way they lock that thing up will change your life. Lake Carl has tons of floating docks. Now, depending on if you're in a creek or if you're on the main lake in the clear water, it's probably gonna determine whether you're using more finesse tactics or if you're power fishing. If you're fishing in the creeks, fishing in the floating docks, probably jigs, spinner baits, or maybe even flipping those docks is probably gonna be your best option. If you're fishing the main lake in the clear water where they're mostly populated with spotted bass, I would say wacky rigs, Nikos, shaky heads, uh, that type of bait is probably gonna be your best bet to catch fish in the clear water around the floating docks. All right, probably one of my favorite ways to catch fish on Lake Hartwell is fishing the bridges. We have a lot of bridges on the lake. Those bridges are just gateways and fish have to move in and out of them. They're almost always close to deeper water. They almost always have food around them. They almost always have habitat, which is very, very important. So fish live around our bridges all the time, especially if you're fishing on foot, the bridges are gonna be a really good place for you to catch some fish. There's bridges back in, in the backs of creeks. There's bridges on the main lake at over a hundred foot of water. And some of those bridges are as shallow as maybe even almost dry or two or three foot. All of those are fair game. If you're gonna be fishing in the back of the creek, crankbaits, spinnerbaits, jigs are a great way to catch fish on the riprap, laydowns, and the pilings themselves. But if you're on the main lake, I would say they're probably gonna use the pilings a little bit more than the riprap, and you can catch fish on a shaky head, a drop shot, miniature swim baits, uh, underspin, jerk baits. Those are all great options to fish the bridges on the main lake in the clear water. It's a big one, bro. That is a giant. That's a big one. That is a big one. That's a big largemouth. That's a big large. Oh, yeah. We need this one, Ethan. We need this one, Ethan. That's a big one, bro. Dude, we got no net. We got no net. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. They messed around and gave me a clue. Coming from like the birds, that's literally all they do is fly around all day and look for bait that's been pushed up by the by the fish. And like seeing how those two elements, those two things are working together uh, to survive is like, it shows you that the lake is just like such a vibrant live place. It's like, it's a cool thing. This is the reason this area is good. You'll notice there's a lot of seagulls out in the middle and every once in a while you'll see some shad flickering the surface. Even though it's real obvious, it's just a spot that the fish are always going to go to. The, the main ingredient while we're catching a few fish here today, bait. You see I got bait. This is on four faces sonar. You see all under the boat, out in front of the boat, there's bait fish. You can even look on the 2D graph. There's bait and there's even crappy. A lot of those fish that you see suspended, or crappy but the main reason they're here is bait is always in this area i don't think i've ever crossed across this bridge and not seen seagulls diving those sea seagulls are pretty much pointing you in the direction where food is hey guys i'm telling you lake hartwell is an awesome place to fish do not be discouraged by the weather 
the more weather we get in this area of the country, the colder it is, the nastier it is, the more weather we have, the more wind, the better the fish bite. They don't care about cold. If the water's in the 40s, don't be discouraged. This is the time of the year when fish up. really now, bite the best. Today, really From January until about May, you can almost count on the fishing being good. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys are gonna catch. I think you're gonna have a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys weigh in some big fish. I guess we don't have a weigh in. Measure in some big fish this week. Thick in the butt. They like big butted, like big butted bass. Now big butted people, I don't want you to get upset about it, but sometimes they can be very, very big butted. 